So with the Euros coming up this year, England have one very big question to answer. Which centre-backs will they be bringing to the Euros? Yes, we don't live in the era anymore where England can stick John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, Sol Campbell or Jamie Carragher in the back. Unfortunately, we live in an era where the options include Slabhead, Sterling's best friend and Phil Jones' singing partner. Chris Morlin. Chris Morlin. Chris Morlin. I'm Phil Jones. But ladies and gentlemen, that does not mean that England don't have decent options to put in the back for these Euros. And that's why in today's video, I have compiled a tier list of some of the best English sense backs in the world right now. And I will be rating their chances of getting into the squad for the Euros this year. Now, I do have to admit that I did get this concept from Football Daily. They did it in regards to English attackers and their chances of getting into the Euros. So I do obviously want to give credit to them. And of course, leave down below in the comment section if you want me to do this kind of concept with any other players like for example french attackers french strikers something like that but you know what i thought england would be a really good option because believe it or not there are some really good english center backs this year so starting off this list looking at this tier list obviously five categories i've created starting at the top you have guaranteed these are players obviously i think self-explanatory that i believe are just guaranteed to get in the english spot for or in the center back spot for england under that we've got regular which means they're not necessarily fantastic but they are regulars in the squad they probably will get in under that it's a good shout meaning i think these players could get in i think they're pretty decent center backs under that we've got unlikely look it's not impossible but chances are pretty slim and under that we've got full jones so pretty much no chance at all of getting in there but you know what? it is a category that is there so starting off on this list let's waste no more time whatsoever i think let's get the big one out of the way i think let's start off with john stones and i think john stones just gonna put him straight there and a guaranteed look if <laughs> john stones two three years ago if you told Manchester City that he would be the best English centre-back in the world at a stage, I think Pep Guardiola, they would have thought he had more of a chance of growing hair than John Stones being a world-class centre-back. But no, this Premier League season, he has by far, along with Ruben Diaz, probably been the best centre-back in the world. And I think those performances have earned him a guaranteed spot in the Euros. Next up, I'm going to go for, once again, another big player in the likes of Joe Gomez. And I am probably going to put him under unlikely. Look. I think he's fantastic. Liverpool fans, I I heard at least five of you click off of this video. Look, I think Joe Gomez is a fantastic center back, but he is injured. And it is unlikely that he'll play again in the Premier League until the end of the season. And because of that, I'm not too sure he'll even be fit for the Euros themselves. And because of that, I don't think Joe Gomez will be playing. Um, I don't think he'll be playing in the Euros because of his injury. Now, next up, I have got the likes of Connor Cody. Now, Connor Cody is a player that I really do love as a center back, but unfortunately, Wolves haven't done that well. And ladies and gentlemen, I do want to clarify to you guys, I'm picking individuals for this team. I'm not picking teams. Wolves might not have been excellent so far this season, but it is all about Connor Cody. And to be honest, I think he deserves to go under good shout. I think he has been a fantastic player, and I think a huge reason to why he could be called up to the England squad is his leadership he is a captain and when it comes to that sort of role a captain could be a vital role because England let's be honest they need leaders in their squad and I think Connor Cody is a great shout not the best center back but obviously I think he does a decent job now looking at the next center back is the perfect example of what I spoke about a few seconds ago and it is going to be Tyrone Mings now looking at him it's very tricky I'm considering either putting him in regular or I should have made another category to be honest but you know what do I think Tyrone Mings I think he might just be a regular in the squad and I will admit this I'm not a fan of Tyrone Mings I think he has been awful so far this season he has not been great and the only reason he would be selected is because he is a regular in the squad and it is unfortunate because i don't even think he's been the best english center back at aston villa and that's saying something but unfortunately tyrone mings versus foster tackers he he is not the greatest when it comes to his man marking he's not the greatest he's lost, uh, lost a lot of headers so far this season and putting him up against the likes of lukaku and Mbappe and ronaldo in the euros i'm not sure i like his chances but as i said unfortunately going to get in there because i think he's a regular now a player who uh th look this is going to be a bit controversial but i'm going to go for harry Maguire next big old slab head look i'm a manchester united fan you don't need to tell me that he's not great i watch him week in week out but i think he'll get in as a regular i know that's a bit controversial he hasn't had the best season 
but I do think he's improved to an extent. I think that he is obviously a big name when it comes to the England national team. Obviously, I mean, made his name in the 2018 World Cup. Absolutely, everyone loved him. Manchester United bought him. It didn't continue, unfortunately. But you know what? I think that he is a good shot. He's not the worst centre-back in the world. His strength is needed. His height is needed. And he's not a bad header of the ball. And he's always done a decent job for the England national team. So because of that, I think that he will make it. Moving on out of Manchester to a former Manchester player. And it is going to be Chris Smalling. Now, Chris Smalling is a player who... I so badly want to put him in guaranteed. He's not a regular, so I can't really put him there. Guaranteed, I don't think he's guaranteed in the spot or that I would say that he should guarantee himself there. But I'm going to put him good shot. I'm going to I'm going to put him next to Connor Cody there, which ironic because obviously Smalling was linked to Wolves for quite a long time because I will say this. Ever since Chris Smalling left the boy band group of him and Phil Jones, they've both completely gone their separate ways. I think that Chris Smalling has been spectacular since he's been at Roma, been one of the best center backs in the league. And we saw that when he got a team of the year and was one of the best center backs last season at Roma. This season, obviously a few injuries here and there. But once again, very similar to Cody, why I think he should be at England, is because he's got that good leadership. I think Smalling, look, he's captained Manchester United on a few occasions, but a bit of an older player, past his 30s. You need that kind of experience. As I said, you don't have John Terry in the team anymore or Rio Ferdinand. I think you need a player like Chris Smalling there because he's got experience. He's been through enough competitions, enough big games. And I think you can't just have young English centre-backs. And that's why I think Smalling should make it there. Now going on, once again, talking about one former Manchester United centre-back to another. We've got Michael Keane. And can I be honest? Oh, okay. What have I done? What have I done? I think Michael Keane should be a guaranteed. That sounds like a big shout. But I think Michael Keane for Everton over the last year or two has been spectacular. Look. Obviously at Burnley he was great, but the next year or two after that, you know, had to find his feet a tiny bit, much like everyone at Everton. But I do have to say this, Michael Keane has been spectacular, a great header of the ball, has easily been Everton's best centre-back so far this season. And he, as I said, just overall has been superb. And I think that England are making a serious mistake if they don't choose Michael Keane in this list. I think that he should have a nail-down spot in the squad. Now next up, I've got the likes of, <laughs> well, bit of a... But, but, but of a weird one, and it is going to be Eric Dyer. And I am, I don't know, am I going to put him under Phil Jones? I'm almost tempted to put him under Phil Jones, but I might just put him under unlikely because I feel like there still is a small chance because for some reason, uh, Eric Dyer always gets elected to the England squad. He's not necessarily excellent or spectacular. It's like putting a gherkin on a burger. I mean, no one really likes it, but it's just there for some reason so that's that's what i think about eric Dyer. he has his good moments from time to time but still not an excellent center back he works better as a defensive midfielder but because of that range and diversity in his play he could get selected for something like that now next up once again i i think this player should go under good shout and it is going to be lewis dunk i'm once again tempted to put him under phil jones because i feel like there's almost no chance he'll get selected for england but I think Lewis Dunk is a seriously good shot. He has been spectacular for Brighton. And once again, an example of a player from a team that, yes, even though the team isn't great, as an individual, he is spectacular. I mean, if you went along with the likes of not choosing someone because of their team, that means you wouldn't select Harry Kane for England as a striker. So I have to put um, Lewis Dunk in here. I think he's a spectacular centre-back. Obviously got his goal ruled out the other day, which... What a spectacular free kick that is. Can we just talk about that for a second? And I don't understand referees these days. They are so awful. Like, cancelled the goal. Didn't count because apparently it was before the whistle blew. How do you, as a referee, not see that a goal is scored after your whistle blew? I mean, you literally have one thing to do. Blow the whistle. Okay, two things. Blow the whistle, then see if the goal is after the whistle. I mean, <laughs> look. I'm not a professional referee, believe it or not, but even I know that, so that was very stupid. But great header off the ball, a great leader once again. I think Lewis Dunk should be a shout for the squad. Now, next up, I do have the likes of Rob Holding from one, uh, well, not London player to another, but once again, a player that I think this is, this is Phil Jones. I don't think that Rob Holding will be selected whatsoever for this England squad. I think he's been okay for Arsenal this season. Once he's got a more game time compared to other seasons, he hasn't looked too bad but saying that there's not a great range of options at center back at arsenal this season i have to say choosing the best out of the lot is like it's really just choosing the shiniest turd isn't it so unfortunately rob holding he's improved the season but 
absolutely no chance of being in the England squad. Now, next up, I have got the likes of Holgate. Once again, another player that's really risen to the occasion this season. Not getting as much game time as he did last season, but I do think that... Look, unfortunately, I think Phil Jones, not even unlikely. I just don't see Holgate being selected for England whatsoever. Once again, I personally think that he is very, very good. But because he doesn't have that experience in the England squad, because there are uh, so many other sense backs that will get chosen over him, I don't see Holgate making it. Which I think Everton should be very proud of themselves because here is the third Everton option more than any other team on this list. And it is going to be Godfrey. Now, ever since Godfrey moved from Norwich, I thought that he's been spectacular for Everton, getting much more game time than I thought, but playing more of a right back position. And unfortunately, once again, I think it will be a full Jones scenario. I think there's absolutely no chance um, of Godfrey getting selected for the squad whatsoever, but I do think that he has been solid option so far this season. And you know what? If he doesn't swap international or national allegiances, I think he could be a serious shout in one or two more competitions for England. Now, once again, talking about future players, we've got the likes of Ben White. Obviously spectacular uh, for England, or not for England, for the likes of Leeds United last season, but hasn't really shown the same caliber of style at Brighton so far this season. And once again, just like Lewis Dunk, his name has been dragged down because of the team a tiny bit. So I don't know if I'm necessarily going to put him in full Jones, but I'm just going to put him in the unlikely category because he does have good games from time to time. But maybe the reputation he built at Leeds last season could carry him through. Now, two players. I'm going to start off with obviously the first one from the same team that I think have a huge reputation. First one is going to be Tarkowski from Burnley. And I don't think enough people talk about Tarkowski. If you look at his stats from last season, he had better stats than Virgil van Dijk in pretty much every single um, section of the pitch and style of play. Saying that Virgil van Dijk had Henderson above him and Tarkowski has Cork ahead of him. But you know what? I think Tarkowski is a great shout. I think that he is a really good centre-back and I think he's proven himself on quite a few occasions. Now, obviously, I think Nick Pope as a goalkeeper from Burnley will get selected for the job because I think he's built up a reputation since the previous World Cup. But saying that, I don't think the centre-backs ahead of him get enough credit, which obviously brings the second Burnley centre-back and it is going to be Ben me now unfortunately compared to Tarkowski look I used to think of Ben Mee as much better than Tarkowski I think he's still a good option but I don't think I think it is unfortunately very unlikely that he will get chosen once again I think he is a fantastic option but I don't think that it is very likely to go for him but ladies and gentlemen we have now reached out I've just realized how low my camera is look I'm short not that short but we have reached our final center back of this list which by the way looking at this list so far you realize that there are some very decent options for England in the centre-back positions. Look, obviously, I've only put two in guaranteed, which isn't the best, but obviously, I think if Gomez was fit, he would go there, which, by the way, if once again, if you have enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe. Obviously, that helps my channel out a lot. We have reached 900 subscribers, by the way, so, wow, thank you so much. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that we could get this far on this YouTube journey, so thank you so much for all the support, and obviously, to grow this channel to 1,000, I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribed, if you are not. And obviously, guys, get this video to 10 likes. I would really, really, really appreciate it. But last sense back we have is going to be Konsa. And unfortunately, as I said, I think he's been better than Mings this season. But unfortunately, not a regular. And because all these other sense backs have had chances with England before and their names have been mentioned more, unfortunately, I think Konsa is probably going to be in... The Phil Jones category. I don't think his name is going to be mentioned, although I think he's had a much better season than Mings. Unfortunately, due to him not having that reputation that all these other centre backs have, I don't think he will be selected for the squad. But, ladies and gentlemen, that will pretty much be it for today's video. And as I said, look how many fantastic options there are for England for these Euros. I think Southgate is going to have a serious job. And obviously, these aren't all the English centre backs, but I'm just not going to actually put Phil Jones himself and Twang Zebe and centre backs like that in the list. Because I don't think there's any chance. So these, I feel like, are probably the best English centre-backs in the world at the moment. And as you can see, I don't think that the, this is very bad. I think Southgate will be very happy, considering the fact that there are so many options. But guys, that'll be it for today's video. Once again, subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed the content. And get this video to 10 likes. As this does help my channel out quite a bit. And do not forget to hit that bell notification to see when I do live stream. To be notified when I live stream. I'm trying to live stream at least once to twice a week. But guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Finn. FY double N England.
is it coming home? <laughs>